Hello and welcome to this new episode of Fortisor Demo Scenarios. Today we will see how Fortisor 7 deals with an advanced phishing attack and a lateral movement. Let's start with one of SOAR main functions, which is alert triage and the elimination of false positives. So we have received uh, this um, email, which has been reported uh, by this user. We can see at a first look that this is an internal email. It came from within the domain itself. Uh, we can see all the relevant uh, attributes. So we have the sender, the recipient, we have a, a quick uh, check via the MX Toolbox uh, connector about the domain properties. And we also have the uh, email itself as being parsed by Fortisor. And also uh, we can observe here the lack of any indicators of compromise. Well, this is expected because this is an internal email. So it came from within the, um, uh, within the domain itself. Fortisor will basically uh, extract all the um, relevant information and at this point we can do a whitelisting so all the uh, data which is uh, which doesn't constitute any uh, threat for the environment will be whitelisted such as you know internal ips and and uh, internal domain this specific um, alert has been deemed uh, false positives because it came from uh, within the domain and it doesn't have any indicators of compromise. This way, uh, by closing this alert and leaving this comment here, it will allow the analyst to focus on the alerts which are which constitute a real threat for the environment and therefore are worthy of, uh, of their times. Let's move now to another alert. So we have this newly uh, created uh, alert. Uh, similarly, we have the summary of the alert. Here it seems to be coming from uh, the outside because uh, it has a different uh, different domain. And we have a, a list of indicators of compromise that were uh, parsed and rated by various uh, threat intelligence uh, uh, services on the internet, as you can see uh, right here. Uh, here we have an attachment file. So we can uh, see that uh, virus total reputation was um, non-existent because most likely the file was a zero day so the the virus total didn't have any uh, data about it but when submitting the file to a local uh, 40 sandbox we can clearly see the verdict is actually malicious 40 sore actually um, allows to peer into the file in a sense where we have this uh, ability to extract data from file, the, the data itself and metadata about the file. So the analyst has a clear idea and um, data about that particular attachment. So we see here the uh, different uh, dates. We see the author of this uh, MS Word document and also a preview of the file itself or of the content of the file itself. So at this point, we are uh, pretty sure uh, this is a malicious. Uh, this is a malicious email. So we perform a uh, an automated triage, which will uh, check whether the indicators are malicious, and if if so, the uh, ticket will be escalated into um, uh, tier two. And the tier one ticket will be uh, will be closed. So as, as you can see here, the ticket has been escalated, and uh, the stages is set to close because the tier one ticket is um, is closed. Now we can check the tier two ticket, which is right here in the correlation tab where we have all the other related objects to um, to this ticket. Now that the ticket has been escalated to tier two, it becomes an incident, right? And we set typically the uh, the phase uh, where we are. We set the stages as well of um, of this uh, newly created tier two ticket. In addition to all the components, all the fields that the tier one uh, ticket has, the tier two ticket has a graphical uh, correlation uh, widget, which helps the um, analyst to quickly grasp the components of this uh, ticket. So we can see uh, basically the um, uh, malicious indicators uh, right here. We can see the IP address, an email, domain, and also the uh, URL right here. Very quickly, um, the SOC operator should stop the, um, the user who reported the email by from advert inadvertently opening the link or the attachment that was received in that malicious email and that's why there is a um, an initial uh, instant remediation playbook which runs 
and it evaluates whether at least one of the indicators if, is um, uh, malicious. If so, the email sender of that e the email sender will be blocked on the email gateway. In this case, Fortimail, and also the email uh, reporter will be notified with uh, with the verdict and with the actions, with remediations actions that are being taken um, to uh, to prevent or to remediate uh, to this. Um, incident. Also, the original email will be deleted from the mailbox of the user. We can check these actions by opening the uh, mailbox of the uh, reporter user. So we can see the last uh, notification, which was the um, incident response notification stating that the uh, email sender will be blocked and uh, the email, the original email uh, will be uh, sent to uh, the trash uh, folder, which is uh, actually what happened here. So we can find the original email right here in the deleted items. All right, now it's very important to be sure that uh, this attack or campaign uh, is not successful because usually when attackers target an organization, it's not just one individual email, right? So they typically target several people with the hope that at least one of them will uh, will fall for uh, the phishing email and then click on the URL or maybe open that uh, malicious attachment. To do that, we go back to Forisim. We go back to uh, our incident and we use the integration with our sim solution to track every single uh, indicator indicator of compromise and see whether it has been seen in the sim solution so we see whether any device anywhere in the environment has actually um, accessed any of the indicators of compromise here so we select uh, either the malicious uh, ones only uh, or we can select all of them so typically we will be interested in the malicious ones. So let's select the malicious indicators and we run uh, the hunt uh, indicator on Fortisim playbook. This uh, again, so this uh, playbook will connect to uh, Fortisim and then identify any match, uh, any, um, uh, uh, any event which reports uh, one of these indicators. Uh, as we can see here, we have uh, already one event uh, identified and we can see that this is the URL. So this indicates that at least one user, and we can see it from here, this uh, source IP address has accessed that URL which was sent in as part of the malicious, uh, malicious email. At this point, the situation becomes critical because we might have uh, one infected machine or we might have several infected machines in the environment. So first we start by uh, linking this infected machine to, uh, to the incident. So by opening, um, by opening the uh, uh, malicious URL, we can find the asset that is involved in this malicious URL and then we can uh, attach it to uh, so we can attach it to the um, to the uh, incident so we go back to our incident and then we add this infected uh, asset to uh, to this particular uh, incident so we have we browse to uh, correlation assets link and then we know which one so it's a 3.10 which was uh, infected and we saved the relationship. Uh, if we, uh, you can see it right here, it, it gets updated. So we see that basically this asset access this URL as part of this incident. Now, the next thing to do is to create a war room because we need to assess what is the uh, depth of the damage and we need to make sure that every uh, single infected uh, device in the environment has been identified and remediated, which requires se usually se the involvement of several teams. And that's why we have the war room, which is a, uh, a collaboration, a crisis collaboration space, where, which allows us to deal with uh, similar situations. To do that, we use a, another uh, automation workflow, so another uh, playbook, which gathers all the data about this tier two ticket, and based on that, creates a war room. 
uh, once done, we can see the war room created right here. So we can click on the link and this will take us right to uh, the war room. The war room has all the history. So all the activity that happened on this ticket. And also it has a dashboard which summarizes um, all the components of this uh, attack. Uh, usually uh, since we have several teams uh, collaborating, even people maybe from outside the, the SOC, we create uh, usually a um, a virtual uh, meeting where and we provide the link so that people can join and uh, participate collaborate on on this uh, investigation we can see clearly here the stages so we have uh, one asset impacted the one that we have just identified through the integration with forasim we have 16 uh, different artifacts five of them five amongst them are uh, malicious so we have two announcements so far so we have a positive confirmation which was uh, uh, which was directly after uh, we have rated the indicators and it turns out that some of them were actually malicious and uh, we have a second one here which was created right after the initial uh, incident uh, response was uh, was triggered so the uh, email sender was blocked on the email gateway and uh, the email was uh, deleted from uh, from the mailbox of the reporter. We also have all the other related objects to uh, to this to the ticket in the in the war room. So we have the incidents, the alerts, the indicators, and the assets. And and it's um, the, the whole interface is a drill down interface. So we can click on any one of them to get the the details of it. Right now, from the task perspective, the um, war room will inherit all the tasks that were in the uh, in the ticket including the completed tasks so as you can see here the uh, initial uh, investigation and remediation uh, task was completed and at the moment we are about to start a new task which is to assess the impact uh, the impact of the attack uh, after confirming a lateral movement uh, through the integration with uh, with sim solution so we can create a, a new um, so new task we can call it uh, threat hunting on sim so it's basically to identify all the machines that are uh, actually infected set to progress and we can assign it to one of the uh, one of the analysts right uh, the task being created now we can uh, start the task itself so we have here the uh, evidence so the event from uh, sim which indicates the access to this malicious indicator we can start with the source ip address and then browse to our uh, sim solution to do the actual threat hunting so we can start by hunting uh, simply the uh, the ip address to have all the communications that happened from that particular ip address so here are the logs and then we can filter further the fields that we are interested in. So we have the destination IP. That's definitely something we would like to see. We have the uh, protocol or the application name. That's also will help us to understand what protocols were used uh, between this infected machine and the other machines in the environment. And uh, we would be interested also in the uh, source IP address, which would be uh, right here. So we have the source IP, the application, and the destination IP address, right? Let's run the query again to draw that picture we are looking for. All right, so uh, it's clearly here that we have a discovery, a lot of ICMP for a lot of, uh, IP a lot of IP addresses. It looks very much like a discovery. We have SMB, which indicates a file transfer. So since this is a web access and a file system operation, we'll add the uh, corresponding links to make it um, uh, clearer for the analyst. Uh, so here we add the uh, URL as a field, and we will add also the file name here as a uh, field to display in, in our logs. So we hit run, and we should get the uh, the fields that we are looking for. All right, so now now it's it's pretty clear. We have uh, so the access, the web access to download the malicious file, and then we can see with time right after, like a second after, we have 
a download of a, an executable, which, which seems very, uh, very suspicious. And then we see uh, when the, the uh, executable file was written on the file system. So we are pretty sure that this executable is actually a malware. So we can dig a bit more into uh, the event. So we can extract, for example, yeah, the uh, hash code of the uh, of the executable and through the hash code we'll have a clear idea um, where the infection happened because any machine having this hash code will be uh, very likely uh, infected so let's start another query where we will be looking for uh, for the uh, the existence of this hash code on any machine in the environment and clearly here we can see that we have few uh, occurrences so looking at the timestamps, we can clearly see that the first infected machine is uh, 13310. So this is very likely patient zero. Now that we have identified the scope of the attack, we go back to Fortisor to initiate the, uh, re the remediation. Uh, the threat hunting is pretty much completed. So we can set it to completed. And at this moment, we should um, alert or we should notify the entire war room that we have identified the patient zero and we have identified as well the uh, infected machine. So we can add here a, uh, an announcement. So it's information. It's important because that's a, it's a major milestone in the investigation. We can say patient zero identified along with all infected machines. We can provide a bit more details, for example, the IP address of the infected machines and several uh, other details, of course, when uh, when it comes to a real uh, investigation. And we notify the responders via email. Then we create the, um, the announcement. Now, each member of this war room should receive the notification, just like you see here, Okay, so we go back to our war room and now we focus on um, uh, quarantining the infected machines that we have identified via the uh, via our SIM solution. We know that all the uh, infected machines share this same artifact. So basically, the uh, infected uh, the the um, malware uh, hash code. So we can use it basically to identify all of these machines in an automated way and uh, quarantine them via a uh, playbook. So we use the quarantine infected asset playbook and we'll see how it works uh, in details so it will ask for the common um, indicator or artifact that will be used as a basis to identify all the machines which have this uh, uh, this uh, artifact and therefore uh, quarantine them from the network and also um, identify their users and block them uh, in the active directory uh, server We, we can see here what the quarantine infected asset playbook does. So basically it takes the, uh, we, we take first the, um, the artifact that we just uh, uh, entered manually, and then it will search in the SIM solution for any devices which match this particular artifact. So here, for example, we have four different matches. So we have four infected machines, which is um, basically uh, the parallel of what we have found in um, in the sim solution itself uh, once this is done we identify the users along uh, side the ip addresses of uh, these users and then it's just a matter of blocking the users on active directory uh, each one uh, one one user at a time and then blocking all these ips on the uh, on our uh, firewall so it will prevent these machines from infecting other machines in the network and by this, we would have contained and quarantined all infected machines and prevented a, or an organization-wide uh, infection. All right, so this is the end of today's session. Thanks for watching and hope to see you next time.